Finally, the most requested topic of my channel. How do you modify a multi-tool? We're finally going to begin that process. I have planned between six and 10 videos, starting with unboxing and tuning a Leatherman Wave. So if this is something of interest to you, you wanna learn how to make this even better than it is out of the box, this is the place. Let's get to it. You know, it doesn't matter how many times I unbox a multi-tool. It just still gives me joy. I think it's particularly funny that the Wave Plus that we're going to be working on over the next series of videos comes tied down the way this is, which I think is quite funny. So obviously we need to open this package up and then we'll go ahead and we'll start taking a look at the way it is right out of the package. All right, now Wave Plus, as this one comes, comes with a sheath, and that's pretty much it. This is all you get when you open up a Wave Plus. Now, I have a process that I use when I get this to determine what needs to be done when I first get the tool. So the, the thing that causes me the most frustration and probably does for a lot of other people is the plier head. So I haven't even touched these yet. And that's why I kind of wanted to leave it with the straps because it, you know, so you guys can see that I did not touch this. Now the question I have is how are the pliers right off the bat? Now these ones, they work okay. They're a little stiff, but not too bad. The real challenge will be, can I force them to lock up and become so tight that they will not open and that does happen from time to time and the what what is causing this is an over peening problem or a piece of deformed metal inside the pivot this is very very common on plier heads in general but specifically it's more common with plier heads that have these replaceable cutters for one reason or another so it's usable right now and i don't have a problem with it now let's go ahead and force it into a situation that it might lock so what we're going to do is we're gonna take our hands together like this. We're gonna squeeze really hard and see if we can force the, the plier head to lock up. Now it did not happen, but there is a way in which we could release it if that does happen. So that's what I wanna show you really quickly. Also, there's more than one way to do this. This is just my preferred way. I just wanna mention that before we get started. I will say there are many different ways to do this, but my preferred way is to grab an item, usually a metal rod or a piece of wood, and then to simply twist the plier head both directions over and over again, and then tighten and then do it. Actually, I am finding that I'm able to release it a little bit I'm also doing this in such a way that you guys can see. The wood is nice because it's both strong enough, but it also gives a little bit. See like now, look at that. Right? So if I squeeze, does it go back to being a little more locked? And it does a little bit. It's not that bad in this one, but I wanted to illustrate how you could do it yourself. Now the closer to the tip you go, the softer the material is you wanna use because the twisting motion, the torquing, is not something you want to overdo per se, but it is possible and it will allow you to loosen the plier head. Do that a bit and really you'll be able to get the tension exactly the way you want it to. All right, now that we have addressed the plier head, what's the next step we want to we wanna look at? Well, let's close it up for a second and determine how well the blades work. Are they easy to open? The answer is yes. So that is a good sign. I'm not having any issues with the blades. Now let's go ahead and go on the inside. Can I have, do I have any problems opening any of these tools? You know what? I gotta say, this gets an A from me. Not an A plus, but it gets an A in that 
I'm able to get access relatively easily to all the implements. They're not loose enough that I can shake them out, but they're good. And also I feel like the tension at the plier head is good enough. I can do this whole spidey flick thing with the plier head and I didn't have to tension it at all. Now let's say you got one that's very tight. What would you do? Now this one happens to be very, very good, which I'm happy about, but it also doesn't give me a great opportunity to explain. We're going to need a very specific set of tools. We're going to need some T10, T10 security torques. I will put a link to where you can get a couple of different types that are different price ranges in the description. I'll have an entire uh, shopping list that shows all the different items that I use as well as some options for you depending on what you have and do not have. So right now what I use for most of my um, modifications is usually this and one other screwdriver. We're going to need two and I'll explain why. So this is a ratcheting driver but also has the ability to store bits at the end as well. So the combination is very good. It's very, very small and allows me to palm the item together with the wave so that I can hold it in a 90 degree orientation while I loosen or tighten the screws. So let me set this up for just a second so you can see how it's supposed to go. Okay, so T10 security torques. You're gonna need a pair of them. They're gonna look just like this. They're gonna have six different sides with a hole in the middle. And uh, they're gonna have different names. This is T10H um, and so on. But they have different names. You can get them usually as part of kits like this one. This was $6 on Amazon. There's other options. DeWalt makes some. Uh, Weha makes some. There's a ton of them out there depending on how much you want to spend. I also found this. Now this is a recent acquisition because I was looking for this 90 degree component with a driver that also had the security bits built in and I found that in this set. So this set has a set of security torques it also has a ratcheting driver and a screwdriver component for fine tension. So this, this had actually all the things I wanted and what it could do is combine this with this and for about 30, I have everything I need. So it also does other functions. It has a lot of other tools in it, but I thought it was at least a decent set. We're gonna find out just how good it is in the this, in this series, but I wanted to at least show that there is an option where you can get the 90 degree Ratchet along with Torx bits that are in security style. This is very important. You're going to need one of those two screwdrivers to be able to be palmed. You can mount it. Now, I do have mounts like this one. And it's just it, attach it to the table, and then you can use long screwdrivers, and you'll be able to keep them from stripping. That's perfectly fine, too. This is going to cost about $20, and it will be used for stuff in the future. But I find with when I'm moving quickly that this isn't necessary for me. And I would rather just have a driver that works better for this purpose. Now, if I take this out, I can put the T10 security torques in it. And then I don't have to have, an, have a problem, basically. So now I can palm this while I'm working on it. And if I were to try to adjust the tension here... What I would do if I was holding my hands is I would put one in there, one in here, and then I would be able to actually adjust the tension like so. Now, when you get a Leatherman Wave, all of the pivots are set with red Loctite. So it is going to be very difficult for you to actually... Um, no, turns out the sizes of some of these torques are a little different. All right, so we're going to grab the T10 security torques here. That comes with the set. We're going to test that out. But 
This tool comes with red Loctite. It's also important to note that only on one of the two sides are you going to need two security torques. This side, you're going to need two screwdrivers in order to hold it in place and adjust its tension. This side, on the other hand, is different. Now, if I pull a frame that I have here, now you can see this is rounded and this is flattened. See the two sides? And the pivots themselves, whoops, excuse me, the pivots themselves are flattened on two sides. So when you unscrew them or tighten them, you're going to only use one of the two sides with a screwdriver. When you start out, you're going to need to probably use the ratcheting driver to unscrew it. So if you're looking down on this, this is the bladed side, and this is the secondary item, so the saw or the file. This side is locking, this side is not. So the way they set, they set it up is they actually put the pivot from this side in, and the screw is on this side. So what that they do is they then will rotate this, this pivot until it lines up with all the washers in between and pushes all the way through. So what you're going to do is to loosen this tool. You're going to use the side with the lanyard or, okay, there you go. And then once you get it undone, you'll notice that you have the screw side. And you can see also the white residue, which is actually red Loctite. Now, for the purposes of this, we are not going to take it apart. Trust me, by the time we are done with this multi-tool, it will definitely not have a warranty. I promise you that. But for now, we're just treating it as if, you know, it's the same for everyone. Now, you can do this with a single security Torx. But what I have found in my testing is that it is far better to have both arrested because what ends up happening is it can, it's not enough where the red Loctite may very well, may very well be stronger than the frame itself. So if I try to loosen this up, it may slip the frame. So what you want to do is you want to, you want to actually have it set up so that you can hold it and then you can have it on both sides. Okay. Now you don't have to, you should be able to get away with a single one, but some of them you'll start to, it'll give, it'll give, and then it'll jump. Right. And that's that feeling that you're going to get when it's slipping that flat part of the frame. So just be in mind, you're still going to potentially want two security torques when you do this. All right. So we were able to tune up this Leatherman Wave. And yes, it didn't need a lot. But if you open one and it has minor issues, now you know what to do. The next video we make, we're going to be talking about modifications to the Leatherman Wave that do not void the warranty. So that's going to include ergonomic improvements. It's going to include storing additional items such as tweezers, a needle and thread, and other things. We're also going to even improve on the ergonomics of the Leatherman Wave by simply filing down parts of the frame. So thank you for stopping in. Hit that subscribe button so you can see when the next video comes out, and we'll see you again soon.